Morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning for the Watsonville Buddhist Temple October Shotsky Hoyo Memorial Service. I hope you are all doing well, staying healthy and safe. Please open up your butsudans, light a candle, and burn some incense as we begin today's service with an opening reading. Please join me in Gasho. Hard is the rock, soft the water. The water wears away the rock. There's an old saying that if there is a will, even the attainment of Buddhahood is possible. No matter how little faith one possesses, if he listens earnestly to the sermons, he will attain faith through the compassion of the Buddha. Therefore, it is important that one listens earnestly to the sermons. Namo Amidavis, Namo Amidavis, Namo Amidavis, Namo Amidavis, Namo Amidavis. Now I'd like to begin the sutra chanting of the Sambujo. This will be followed by the Kyobyakamon or the dedication reading. And then we'll chant the Sambutsuge and the Jusege. And during those sutras, you will see the names of families observing memorial in the month of October for the Watsonville Buddhist Temple. Amanda was Amanda was Amanda was Amanda was. Ah. Uh... 
Today on this occasion, in the Watson of the Buddhist Temple of Toga Shotsuki Hoyo, members of the Sangha have verily come before Amida Buddha in memory of their beloved family members. With deepest reverence and thankfulness, for the all embracing wisdom and compassion of Amida, we reaffirm the three homages. I go to the Buddha for guidance, I go to the Dharma for guidance, I go to the Sangha for guidance. Namo kia boots, namo kia ho, namo kia so. Oh, 
Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask you to all join me in the Gatha and followed by the threefold refuge.
Threefold refuge, difficult is it to receive a human form, now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the Dharma of the Buddha, now we hear it. We do not cross over to the truth in the present life, in what life shall we cross over? Let us with sincerity and true reverence take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in the Buddha, and we together with all sentient beings awaken to the great way of enlightenment and to the unsurpassed intent of Amida Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. May we together with all sentient beings enter the storehouse of the Dharma, becoming like the wisdom ocean. I take refuge in the Sangha. May we together with all sentient beings become units in true accord in harmony with all things. The peerless, profound, and wondrous Dharma is rare to encounter even in many hundreds and thousands of calls. Now we are privileged to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of the Tathagata's teaching. Sankhiyamon, Ninjin Kegatashi, Ima Sudani Yuku, Uppo Kikigatashi, Ima Sudani Kiku, Konomi Konjoni, Kate, Dose Zumba, Sarani, Isure no Shoni, Kataka, Konomi O Dose. Daishu Morotomo ni Shishin ni Sambo ni Kiyashi Tatematsuru Deshi. Mizukara Butsu ni Kiyashi Tatematsuru. Masa ni Negawaku wa Shibyoto Tomo ni Daido wo Taige shite Mujo Yoko san. Mizukara ho ni Kiyashi Tatematsuru. Masa ni Negawaku wa Shibyoto Tomo ni Kaku Kyozo ni Ite Chiemi, Umi no Kotoku Naran, Mizukara Soni, Kiyashi Tate Matsuru, Masani Nagakua, Shijoto Tomoni, Aishu, Oriste Sai Mugeran, 
Ujo jin jin ni mio no ko wa ya ko sen mang wa ni mo ayo ko to kata si o re ma ken mo si yuji suru ko to kata ri ne ga wa ko wa na ino shin ji tsu gi o ge shi ta te ma tsu ra ma ma nda ko sa ma nda ko sa ma thank you very much everyone good morning again to all of you i hope you're all doing well uh it's really almost impossible to believe that uh, it is fall. This is the month of October. And as I look out my backyard at home, I see the maple tree leaves are starting to turn from their bright green to uh, oranges and yellows. And uh, the other trees in the yard as well are starting to lose their leaves. So we know, and I know just by looking out the window that fall is here. So my question to all of you this morning is, what does it mean to you, this beginning of fall? What does it bring to you, this fall? So fall is the beginning of a season where you know, next month we'll be celebrating Thanksgiving. We have Halloween coming at the end of this month. We have our Eitaikyo Moen Hoyo services, our all our Sangha Memorial services. And so uh, it is a time when we, you know, traditionally we're staying more indoors because of the weather, but it's also a time to reflect over the past years. It begins to, this year begins to wane and end. And we think about, you know, for example, like Thanksgiving, what are we thankful for? And I know for many Thanksgiving is a, a day to gather and have great food, but we should take a moment to think about what we're grateful for. Also, I know that the, what is it called? Uh, the day after Thanksgiving is Black Friday when everybody goes shopping. But for me, one of my favorite things about this time of year is to see the changing of colors in nature, watching the trees turn to the beautiful reds and oranges. When I was living in Japan, this was one of my favorite seasons. I would go up into the mountains and look at the, the fall colors. And in Arashiyama, they had this thing called um, Momiji Tempura, which was small little maple leaves that they would cook in a sweet batter of tempura, uh, sell it in bags, and it was very tasty. But it was the colors of the season that really was wonderful. Also, the, you know, the other day we had a talk by Reverend, Dr. Reverend David Matsumoto on Xinjiang. And he was talking about Kaki. And uh, it reminded me of the fall, that every year in the fall, Kaki uh, starts to grow, we'll start seeing it in the stores. And I know many of you know what Kaki is. There might be a few who are watching who don't know what Kaki is. It is a persimmon. And it comes out in the fall, as I mentioned. Um, uh, when you hear the word kaki, you either think of oysters, which is also kaki, and then kaki, which is the fruit. Kaki. And there's two types of fruit that Reverend Matsumoto was talking about the other day. Hachiya and fuyu kaki. Uh, my parents in Mount Fuji had two large kaki trees um, I don't have any kaki trees in my yard, so I often uh, miss having that kaki to pick and eat at my leisure. And my father had both the hachiya and the fuyu kaki growing. And the, I think I, I keep mixing the two up, but one is, is more shaped like an apple. And you can pick it off the tree when it's ripe and eat it and it's crunchy and sweet like an apple. And the other, I think it's hachiya, is shaped like more like a heart shape. And I remember my dad throwing it on a plate when it was really, really ripe and mushy and take a spoon and just eat that kaki that way. Not my favorite. But what some people do is they hang it outside and they um, care for it as it hangs on strings outside, this hachiya. And it soon turns to a 
dark red or dark brown color as it dries. And then when it's ready, you eat it and it's really sweet and delicious. So um, this is how that particular country is made. And the point that Reverend Matsumoto was making and that I wanna to make today is that the persimmon, when it's first on the tree and it's, it has this pungent, almost bitter flavor, you can't just eat it until it's either soft and ripe like my dad used to eat it or you dry it. And the dried one is, is an interesting uh, metaphor for our lives, how we are sometimes bitter, sometimes we are not sweet, sometimes we are uh, more selfish than we are selfless, sometimes we're not willing to share. But the sun takes that kaki and just by its the weather, the wind and the sun, it transforms that bitter kaki into the sweet dried fruit just by the sun. In the same way, uh, you know, Amida's compassion is extended towards us, even though we are bitter, even though we are selfish and we don't share. That Amida's compassion turns that bitterness and that selfishness into enlightenment. Thank you. Uh, in our neighborhood, we have Neighbors down the street who have one guy in particular who has a big kind of tree. It's huge. And every year there's all sorts of food on that tree. And it's a uh, fuyu kaki, so the kind that you can just pick and eat. And but she's unwilling to share. People, neighbors across the street who you know, do favors for her ask if they can pick kaki, and she says no. And uh, so she doesn't want to share, but yet there's tons of fruit on that tree every year. And sadly, you know, the crows and other birds come and they're eating all the fruit. And I know there's more than enough to go around, but she refuses to share. There's a story about Kaki and uh, Neil Korni by the name of Genza, who is uh, famous in uh, Jodo Shinshu tradition. Uh, he's a country guy who lived uh, in the country and, and one autumn day um, Genza saw his son and he was building a fence around the kaki tree and around on top of that fence he put barbed wire around the kaki. So it was made of you know not like we have barbed wire made of metal but it was thorns and branches and stuff that he built around of the fence to protect the kaki. Genza asked him, what are you doing? He says, oh, all the neighborhood kids, they come and they pick the kaki and they're stealing the fruit. So I'm building this fence so that they can stay away. So that prevent them from climbing up the tree and picking all the kaki. So Genza looked at his son and he said, stop doing that. Take that fence down. Take down those vines and thorns and things. He says, I feel terrible if any of those kids started to climb and got hurt because of what you're building. Then Genza took a ladder and leaned it up against the tree. And the son said, Dad, are you serious? Are you really going to put a ladder up there? If you put that ladder up there, everyone will come and take our kaki. And Genza replied, we could not eat all that kaki. So it's better that we can share with others. So as Genza states in this very simple story, we're not able to eat all the kaki from one tree. We're not able to eat all the apples, all the mashi, whatever it is. So it's better to share with our neighbors and friends and family. Genza knew that the kaki is not all his own. Although it's his yard, he knew that the nutrition the sunlight, the water, the soil is coming from nature. Therefore, the kaki could be shared or should be shared with other people. Even the birds and the insects can share their kaki. You know, Amida Buddha 
is like that sun, like the soil, like the water that nurtures us, slowly transforming our bitterness, our selfishness, our ability, our inability to share openly, and turns it into the sweetness of Nembutsu, not more than those. It encourages us to have a broad, open mind, to see things not just as they are, not just as kaki, but representing so much more. And sometimes, you know, in our life, we can be selfish, we can be stingy. It's for times like this that we should turn to the Dharma, we should listen to the sermons, we should listen to Amida Buddha, who established the vow that says, even though we are selfish, even though we are stingy, even though we can't share, we can be liberated from this small, self-centered and stingy mind by the warmth of Amida's great compassion that turns bitter fruit into sweet tasting fruit. So please, all of you, if you have kaki, please share. If you have other fruits and other things, please share with others. Thank you very much. Please join me in Gasho. Namo Amidabas. Namo Amidabas. Namo Amidabas. Namo Amidabas. Namo Amidabas. Just one announcement to make before we close, and that is that we will have our Monterey Shosky Hoyo service for October. Next week, I hope you're able to join us and tune in and watch next week's service. So please uh, join me in the Gatha Ombo Sun. Faults of others are easy to see. The faults of our own are difficult to recognize. If one sees that he has a fault, he must realize that the fault must be very grave indeed for him to recognize it in himself. Thus, he must take steps to correct his fault. Because it is difficult for us to see many of our faults, we should listen to the advice of others. Then you are shown. Namu Namu Amidabus. Thank you very much, everyone. This will conclude our services today for the Watsonville Buddhist Temple Shotsky Hoyo. Please take care, be well, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week.